Hello and welcome to this assignment walkthrough video for the DHIS2 curriculum developed by Logical Outcomes. My name is Nicholas Santillo and in this video I'm joined by Georgie Chakrav and together we go through the process of structuring your data elements that you've chosen and putting them into categories. Okay, so I'm here with uh, Georgie. Hey Georgie. Hello Nick. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good. Uh, and today let's go through the uh, assignment for structuring data elements and categories. So we're looking at your screen now, yeah? Yes. Cool. Uh, so in this uh, assignment, what we want to do is we want to just create as an offline assignment and we want to create just some tables uh, or look at the structure of tables that will help uh, organize your data elements so that you kind of know what you're looking at uh, before you create your config sheet or before you create them. This is kind of an optional um, assignment. If you already know how the, your data elements are structured, you can kind of skip this. But uh, let's scroll down and look at the some of these tables that we've developed here, Georgie. Now, Georgie, have you ever worked with these tables uh, or anything like this yourself? Yes, actually, I have. I have uh, worked with tables for other clients. And actually, what I uh, have experience with is uh, transferring a paper form that is used for collecting data uh, uh, and creating a DHAS data entry form. So these tables, in a sense, are really handy when you would like to prepare a little bit the information. So say you uh, take a specific question of the paper form and you know this is your data element, but then, uh, or a specific piece of information, and then on the paper form you see that uh, you have a few disaggregations, like it could be age, it could be gender, Right, so it is really useful that uh, you prepare the tables like that to facilitate a little bit the the uh, data entry form structuring. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we're just, I guess, we really just need to explain what we're looking at here because then it's up to um, the viewer or the you know the user to really just fill it out themselves. So uh, in the example, what we're looking at is one data element that's on the far left column there, the number of school-aged children receiving school meals. And that's disaggregated by female or male is how we've decided for this data element. So what we would then do is we would continue one row for each data element that has the same disaggregation, which is female or male. Uh, and there's those two uh, nulls under female and two under male. And that's the idea that you might have a secondary disaggregation, for, for example, age. And then the age would be maybe under 18, over 18 for females and under 18 over 18 for males if we wanted to do that and that's why the the template up there on the top is category one option a category two option a and that sort of thing uh, and then you'd have a uh, a new set of three columns for each different disaggregation you want and you could actually of course have uh, more than two options you can have three or four or five options if you want to uh, disaggregate by by that as well so do, is, does that, uh, do you have anything to add to that, Georgie? No, actually, that was uh, quite a good explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, then, and then the second one, the structuring category combinations worksheet. So this is, we're moving forward into the idea of you have to create category combinations uh, in DHIS2. So one of the reasons to understand how you structure your data elements is also understanding how you structure your categories and your category combinations. So uh, once again, you have this empty template sheet that we're giving you as an example to fill out yourself. Uh, and let's just go down and look at the example so that we can kind of talk about it. Uh, at the top row, we see the gender uh, disaggregation. So we have the two options, which we'd have to create. And that goes into one category. And then the category combination is just the, categ just the category of gender, because that's how you, in DHIS2, you have to choose to assign category combinations to data elements or, or data sets. Uh, you, and so your category combination can be either one category or multiple categories. Uh, in this case, all of these options are just one to one, but you can have multiple categories. You can, for example, have gender and school activity uh, as a category combination that included uh, those first two if we, if we wanted. And then looking down at the others, we just have other examples of categories, uh, what you're looking at there. Yeah, facility constructed, uh, after school activity, type of training. Those are other disaggregations for different data elements that we have in our system at uh, dev.logicaloutcomes.net. 
and you can see that there's more than two options. We have four options in one, we have uh, five options in the other, and three in the other. And this is just a great way to be able to disaggregate uh, because we might want to see uh, how many facilities were constructed by a certain org unit or, or anything like that, depending on our data elements. Um, Georgie, do you want to just, before we finish, I think this is basically it, but do you want to kind of talk about why we like using category combinations uh, as opposed to, you know, you could make a uh, classroom constructed as a data element and commodity storage constructed and k kitchen constructed. Why, why do we do the category combinations? Okay, that, that's a, a good question. Um, basically, when you uh, structure a data element and you assign a category combination to it, uh, this is a uh, first an easy way of collecting and disaggregated uh, information about that data element. And then you can actually quickly aggregate. So when you report that data element, you can decide to choose to show the, the total uh, data, for example, um, the total amount of facility constructed, but then uh, in your reports, you can actually facilitate uh, the representation by a specific category. So you can show the total facility constructed, but then you know how many of these were classrooms and kitchens and latrines and, and so on, so forth. Okay, right. So we get this wonderful capacity. DHIS2 allows us to, to look at a report and evaluate between the category options um, and as well as add them together as, as a total. Uh, and we save on having to make five different data elements. <laughs> exactly. <As well. laughs> cool. Okay, I think that's good for now. So uh, thanks, Georgie. And I think that's that kind of wraps up a little brief walkthrough of this assignment, structuring data elements and categories. Yes. Thank you, Nick. Thanks. That's all for now. As always, you can get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or on our YouTube channel, Logical 